After the first bad day of 2024 on Tuesday, we instantly bounced back yesterday, going four for four on underdog, winning eight units on the day. Hopefully we can continue that today. Let's go ahead and jump into the best bets for today on both prize picks and underdog. And just looking at the board today, we are getting a lot of prop bets for a lot of different sports. We're just not getting a lot of good prop bets for all the sports. Uh, you guys know the sweet spot is kind of fantasy score for the most part. Uh, we're not getting the fantasy score props just yet. Looking at some of the bets that we are getting for uh, PGA as well. I don't really like much of those ones that we are getting there. So it is much more of a tighter board today, which is a little bit unfortunate. I do want to start out with some of these golf props though, however. And so just as an FYI again, guys, uh, the tournament that's going on right now, golf wise, there's two different courses. There's the North course, the NC course, and the South course, the SC course. So that's why it's listed differently. That's why you're seeing uh, different lines out there for both the book. But when we look at it, um, a lot of the golfers yesterday were able to go low that played on the North course, which is expected. So I'm looking at some of these lines that we're getting for some of the better plays uh, for the North course. That should be good plays. Jaeger for under 69 strokes. I do like, I think that has a great chance to be a push, but chances are he's going to get lower than that he's one of the better golfers in the field which sounds weird to say because anyone that knows golf knows he's uh doesn't have that much upside but he is a solid and consistent producer uh from there like bazoon hout that seems too high at 69 like chances are for those two golfers specifically they're gonna get under 69 but more likely it's probably just going to be uh, them scoring 69. And then for what's worth, like Keegan Bradley as well, kind of struggled yesterday, made it eagle on his last hole, uh, but all in all 68.5. I mean, it's you're losing the push aspect of it, but more times than not, he's going to go at least four under today, which is what this would be to hit. And so I do like that one as well. We got three seemingly good PGA props. That if you guys want to use those by all means, go for it. And for what's worth, looking at Sanjay M here as well, I think there's a good chance that he gets over five birdies on underdogs. So that would be a good prop that you can roll with. We're not getting that many prop line differences, however. So for me, I it's not like the edge that we were getting a little bit yesterday. Um, but let's go ahead and move on into the next sport. College basketball wise, we're not getting much today. Uh, we may or may not get some good fantasy score props. Uh, I do think it's worth calling out. I think this is a good little teaching moment of why uh, like middling can be pretty big and finding the best lines per site, specifically underdog and prize picks. Those are the top two dogs. Uh, Reese Beekman, uh, very unfortunate, very unlucky that that game went to overtime. So his line did not hit on prize picks. Still came very close. It was 0.3 off of hitting on prize picks, but underdog had it set a little bit higher like a point and a half higher. And so with that, this was still able to cap. Okay, this is something I want to call. And for, for this matter as well, uh, Jameer Young, I don't think this cash on prize picks as well. Uh, this was a big difference there. So middling can be a useful source of profitability, especially when it comes to college basketball fantasy score, where we notice a bunch of big prop line differences. So I do think that's worth calling out because we just aren't getting those right now. And it's a small slate for college basketball today. So I doubt we're going to get a lot of those, but it will be worth checking in for anyone that's a nine to five member just check in on the college basketball fantasy score props to see if there are any good ones uh during the day for what's worth league of legends props we are getting some prop line differences there i think that these are fine again like i only like using these prop line differences when they're so small really to close out a build uh slip that i want to make it a six slip bet or heck maybe even a four slip bet like i don't like to do three slip bets uh but looking at we, we have a pretty good middling opportunity here as well with lava uh where you do over 7.5 map one and two kills and then under nine on prize picks. Decent edge there. That's a pretty big prop line difference as a whole. Uh, but that's kind of it. Maybe nah, that's not enough for total games for tennis. So let's go ahead and get into hockey. And then I'll get into NBA doing a deep dive for you guys. So looking at it again, we aren't getting that many good props uh, today. Hockey wise, specifically on prize picks. I see like one decent one here and maybe this one as well. But again, I typically like to roll with profits where it is a 0.5. That way we don't have to worry about it being a push. It's either going to hit or not hit. So this one I do like. And then we have another decent one here uh, with about a 53.9% chance to hit. Hit, shots on goal so two decent ones uh nhl wise but all in all not not like your locking loads obviously i never like to use that word but let's go in and jump on into nba so nba wise today we are waiting on some news tobias harris could sit if he sits that might actually mean that nick batum gets a little bit more minutes in this game uh joel Embiid should be able to crush in this matchup going against indy although siakam has led to games being a little bit lower for the over and under as well as halliburn being off the court don't get me wrong when he's off the court the pace does slow down a little bit and looking at the prop bets that we're getting right now like i don't see that big of an edge maybe maxi for over points and rebounds I mean, especially so 
if we get news that Tobias Harris sits. Like, I would argue this is already a little bit too low given the matchup that we have today. He's someone that already gets heavy minutes, Maxi. If you look at his per 36 production with Tobias Harris off the court, averages 32.2 points per 36, three rebounds, and then 6.2 assists. So for points and rebounds, he could get there just in points alone. If he adds on three rebounds, obviously we love that there. Uh, but once again, we are kind of just chasing the matchup here with Indy. That should be a good matchup for him. Uh, so even if Harris plays and he has gained a points, rebounds, and assist prop, Tobias Harris is. But if he were to sit, Maxi should still be a decent chance again there. Obviously, the data has about a 51.4% chance that I would probably agree with that. But I do think it's a decent over bet regardless of if Harris plays. Obviously, it becomes a much, much better bet if Harris were to sit. And then looking at the Pacers, I don't really like the prop at sub game for the Pacers. I mean, maybe Aaron Naismith for over points, rebounds, and assists, but it's he's not someone I, I want to trust, per se. So let's just move on into the next game. And in the next game, we have Utah versus Washington, which in theory should be a very solid spot for both teams. Uh, Washington is coming in on the back end of the back-to-back. -back. Colin Sexton really had a good game in his last game. He's someone I think we could go back to today uh john collins 24 points rebounds and assists also seems too low given the matchup that we have uh really colin sexton at 31.5 points rebounds and assists also seems too low uh fontecchio for 16.5 points rebounds and assists also seems too low let's touch on all those and so colin sexton to me is the one player that does feel i don't want to say safe but kind of safe here uh in the last game against the pelicans he had himself a very good game and that game was a blowout you know he had 32 pra and so even at this line that we're getting him in a blowout that occurred against the pelicans he was still able to get the over now this is going to be a much much better matchup for i shouldn't say much much better but a better matchup for him he has been someone that has been rolling as well assuming that this game stays close and i think we should just given the fact that it is washington i expect colin session to get this over i'm actually a little bit surprised by this line um maybe the they're expecting Jordan Clarkson to play a lot. I mean, he does play a lot. Maybe they're expecting Chris Dunn to play. Well, I don't exactly get it. All in all, I, I think we're in a pretty good line there. Uh, Fontecchio is definitely interesting. He is someone that, for the most part, like, has been playing pretty well for Utah. Assuming the game stays close enough for long enough, and this is a good matchup again, I think we have a decent stacking opportunity. Now, yesterday that did not work out for us with the Portland uh, value that we were getting. We know. I mean, that's going to happen, but I do think that these are correlated. If Fonteki has a good game, that's going to mean Colin Sexton probably has a good game. And then John Collins is the one that might be a little bit too thin because his minutes have been all over the place. We can't exactly trust him to get a lot of minutes. Still, if he gets us 25 minutes in this game, which he might not get. He's only projected to get 24. But if he gets 24, I would imagine he'd be able to get this over. The The issue comes when he only gets 20 minutes. You know, that's taken probably two points off the board, maybe a rebound, and then... You know, about a rebound and a half, I should say. Uh, so I do think that's a good line that we're getting on John Collins. But again, probably more of stacking opportunities. Let's see if we have a way to run it back with Washington. And so looking at Gafford for over points and re or points and assists might not be terrible. We know he's probably not going to get an assist, but he could just simply get the over points. I don't mind that Gafford for over points, rebounds and assists. That's not terrible as well. Again, though, this is the back end of back to back. He was someone that was uh, kind of injured as well. But I do think that's a good line. What I'm wondering, though, is Washington. I don't know how to phrase it, but they're coach is no longer there their head coach is no longer there and so i'm wondering if maybe the washington players like gafford like some of these other guys get more or less minutes that's that's a concern for sure we don't exactly know what's going to happen minutes wise but i do think we are getting pretty good lines on something like gafford you look at the easier matchups for him he's been able to produce in those matchups and again assuming this game stays close i think this makes a lot of sense in the game stack denny is fine as well like i'd be fine with that but it is kind of interesting to wonder what washington is going to do exactly with their match. so from there we move on into the next game we got boston versus miami um gotta see what's gonna happen is terry rogier gonna start for them uh hawk has game time decision kevin love game time decision for me i really don't think we're gonna want to touch any profits that we're getting in that game uh it should be a fun game to watch don't get me wrong uh, we'll take a peek though, see if we're getting any good prop bets for either team. So right now we're only getting BAM props, which I guess makes sense not knowing what's going to happen with the other players, but I don't think we want to touch that. Uh, we'll take a peek at Boston. Everyone's healthy for Boston, so we're not getting an edge there at all. Uh, it seems like over the past like two or three weeks, someone significant uh, for Boston has been out. Uh, Drew Holiday over points is the best one that we are getting, but uh, yeah, if we're going to do Drew Holiday over points, we'd be better off running points, rebounds, and assists. It is kind of interesting. I think Terry Rozier playing a lot and Tyler Hero, you know, playing a lot together that's going to make Miami's defense a little bit worse so maybe someone like Drew Holiday does have a good game but that's not something I would want to bet on you know I would only see getting to any of the props in this game if someone were ruled out or if we had a stacking opportunity and I don't think we do so moving on into the next game that we have here guys uh 
we're seeing that Mike Conley game time decision. If he said tough to say exactly what's going to happen uh, minutes wise, uh, like Ant-Man had himself a very good game last game, but no one really truly benefits. It's just other players get more minutes. And given the matchup with Brooklyn, I don't think we would want to be touching anyone from Minnesota first say anyways uh looking at Brooklyn if Cam Johnson sits that might force us into a little bit uh Bridges and Dinwiddie but I just I really don't like those two teams either so let's go ahead and move on into the next game here we got Denver versus New York Mitchell Robinson out Isaiah Hornstein game time decision and so that is a pretty good matchup there for New York I shouldn't say pretty good matchup but if we knew that Precious was getting at 25 minutes in this game I think we'd be looking at him Jericho Sims had himself kind of a career game uh he is typically someone and if you guys play NBA DFS like even if he's starting you don't like him as an option because he kind of sucks point per minute wise and he had himself one of his best games against Brooklyn so four blocks is why I uh, didn't really do anything else obviously you can't depend on that there from him maybe maybe that's a profit that you guys like maybe it pops up you get over you know 0.5 rebound or uh, steals and blocks for him maybe uh, but the one that I like the most is Julius Randle I just think that's gonna lock in his minutes for sure the matchup with Denver is not something we would typically like uh, but look at the shot attempts 19 shot attempts in that game and I think the rebounds are gonna be more consistent as well he, like he's just more likely to his averages so I don't mind that maybe we get some game stack props and then uh, Jalen Brunson continued the hot streak that he had been on not as much so only 30 points but yeah only 30 points still had seven three ball attempts and so looking at the prop that we're getting for New York I don't mind Julius Randle for over 8.5 rebounds I think the line that we're getting there is correct but I would favor the over there uh Jalen Brunson for over points rebounds and assists I would be fine running out in game stack like if we're trying to play place bets from this game Jalen Brunson over points rebounds and assists Julius Randle over point or uh over rebound uh let's take a peek at Denver Denver no one's out uh significant there or of significance there so I would say the lines that we're getting here are, are accurate like I don't feel the need to go out of my way the only one I wouldn't want to do is uh Aaron Gordon for under uh 13.5 points I think that's a better bet on the underdog to just bet the over 12.5 there uh he is someone that if the game stays close he can get there and then moving on we got the Kings versus uh Golden State it seems like De'Aaron Fox always plays well against Golden State so that might be something we're looking at and then looking at Golden State they are just I don't like targeting Golden State right now they're just kind of an annoying team like I do think Curry's gonna have a good game tonight going against the Kings you know it seems like he does typically go off against them last game against the Kings 10 rebounds six assists 29 points obviously you, you love that there from him uh the previous game 21 points five rebounds three assists not the best game per se but not terrible and then 41 points four rebounds four so he is typically someone that plays well like I do think we're going to get some stacks here I do think it's worth pointing out some of the minutes that have been happening Andrew Wiggins is finally getting more run so maybe maybe if we can lock in 30 minutes from him in this matchup like he should be able to go off Jonathan Kaminga in his last game did have a pretty good game and he has been someone that's been much more consistent as well maybe he's someone we're looking at in this matchup in a stack as well so looking at the props that we're getting right now like I don't mind Wiggins for over points 12.5 uh Curry for over points and rebounds that's fine Curry for over points rebounds and assists that's also fine like I do think we have some I, I think today's just a better stacking day thus far without having the fantasy score props maybe we will at the end of the video we'll see but I kind of like those ones that we were getting uh, let's go and take a peek at the Kings and so yeah I might want to fire off if I'm if I'm running out those other prop bets for Golden State I probably would run it back with the best Aaron Fox prop that we have and that's gonna be points and assists and so in one game against them 29 points seven assists that was the last game and then the other game 39 points four assists so yeah that one feels pretty good he just seems to always play well against them uh so I, I really don't mind that one you could argue though he's due to have a bad game against them I get that I, I do like that line though so an, another decent stacking opportunity there I think <laughs> and then looking at Chicago versus the Lakers now we saw on Sunday where we went three for three with the slip there uh Kobe White was someone that was being undervalued and you could argue he is again today even at 32.5 now it's not the 29 and a half I think it was or maybe it got bumped up one throughout the day which still felt a little bit too low and I did notice that the fantasy score on him was also too low throughout the day that one didn't really adjust but here we go I think this is a pretty good uh bet that we are still getting Again, his per 36 production with Levine out would suggest that we should be looking at betting the over here. And I think that's especially true with uh, with D'Angelo Russell getting more minutes for the Lakers. That's going to be an even better matchup for him. And for the Lakers, we're not getting that many good prop bets just yet because we need to get news on if whether AD or LeBron are going to play. So showing you guys the bet of the day first for prize picks. Uh, I, I do want to just mention again, I know some people skip forward to the end and don't get all the tidbits for the slate. I do think that today is a much better day for stacking. Again, a little bit of Golden State versus 
the Kings. I think that's going to be good. I think Utah versus Washington, that's going to be good. Like we're going to have some good stacking opportunities. So I just want to echo that again. To me, these are the best six prop bets that are go along with those kind of opinions I had about those other games as well. So this is what I'd be looking at to accomplish that. And I do feel like the, the PGA props that we're currently getting are good prop. Bets. Well, do you need to run out a six slip bet? No. Again, I think it's a better stacking opportunity day, uh, but I do want to wait for the fancy score. So again, if you guys are nine to five site members, if you're not, it's $10 a month, but be checking the cheat sheet. We might be getting some better fantasy score prop bets uh, potentially throughout the day in college basketball or NBA. And then getting into the underdog bet of the day, I do think that these are the two best prop bets. Well, because the board's telling me that these are the two best prop bets. If you want to go ahead and toss in Sunjay M for over uh, five birdies or better, that's also fine. He's playing on that easier course today. Basically, that's scoring four birdies on all the par fives and then adding on another one somewhere to have it be a push. And then obviously, Getting that extra birdie becomes much more difficult. But again, with the scoring that occurred yesterday on the North course, I would expect him to be able to do that. That's going to be all for today's video. Make sure to give a like and subscribe. Uh, definitely hit the like button. I mean, we've been crushing thus far this January. Let's get these videos up to 100 likes per video. Uh, that does help out the channel a lot. If you guys want access to the tools in this cheat sheet, uh, head on over to 95sports.com. Available for $10 a month. Thank you guys for watching. Let's have a good slate. And as always, let's keep cashing. Seriously, this has been a great run. Let's keep it up.